Hey everybody, so in this video, I wanna talk about Cinemark, and I'm not really telling you guys to invest in this, nor is this really financial advice. Um, I'm talking about Cinemark today because uh, somebody by the name of Hodler went ahead and messaged me on Discord asking if I could cover this. Now, uh, you know, despite his name, he doesn't own GME, or at least that's what it seems like. And um, he told me he invests in Disney and Cinemark, so um, to me, this investor seems like somebody who's betting on the underdogs, hoping that they're going to uh, recover um, and go back to glory days. So this is actually the opposite of what a lot of investors are doing. A lot of investors right now, they're buying into these stocks that did amazing during the pandemic, but are now suffering because their year over year comparisons don't look as great. So, um, you know, good on this guy or girl whoever they are. But there are some things that, um, you know, just my personal opinion, some things that I don't like about Cinemark. Now, the first of that that I'm going to point out is their average ticket price. So if we're looking at average ticket price, and this is just movie theaters in general. So when, my, when I'm looking at average ticket price, it's $7.12. Now let me just go over to Netflix. Now Netflix costs $9.99 to basically watch a ton of different movies at the comfort of your own home. Now, if we're going into a recession, you know, I would want to save uh, money. I wouldn't really want to go to a movie theater, but you know, maybe that's just me. And, um, you know, there's a lot of other things going on, you know, like people can basically watch a movie for free if they just illegally stream it somewhere. So uh, I definitely do think movie theaters are getting a little bit more risky. So uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna compare uh, 2019 income statement with uh, 2022 income statement. So uh, 2022, we were actually um, negative in this uh, second quarter here, but in 2019, those were some of the um, better days where we were actually making money and uh, earnings per share was actually positive. So here I'm just gonna look at uh, 2019 in uh, 2019 Q2, we were making 714 uh, million, because this isn't thousands, so 714 million in revenues. Now we're gonna look at uh, 2022, total revenues were only 460 million, so this is significantly less. So uh, Cinemark is still having a lot of trouble recovering back to the glory days. You know, they're still suffering from uh, pandemic um, drawbacks. And uh, just keep in mind that uh, movie theaters are always going to have that risk of, you know, COVID coming back and getting really bad. So, you know, that's always a risk. Now, uh, let's just look at their bottom line. If we look at their bottom line, uh, let's see. Net income, uh, 32 million. And they gave us a diluted earnings per share of uh, 28 cents. And look over here, uh, net loss of 74 million. But also keep in mind, you guys, that um, Cinemark has a lot of depreciation and amortization, which isn't really a cash expense. So always keep that in mind. If we're looking at that, um, let's see, where is that? Depreciation and amortization, that's about 62 million. So always keep that in mind. And when we look at um, diluted earnings per share, that is negative 0.62, so it does not look too great. Now, um, one more thing I wanna look at is I wanna go to macro trends. Macro trends is always nice to look at. So we're gonna look at PE ratios here. So when we look at PE ratios, um, typically I would say that uh, Cinemark is trading around, uh, let's say like 13 to 15. So obviously right now we have negative earnings per share. So if we can recover some of this, let's say we go back to uh, like 1.5 or something, and we're looking at 15 PE multiples. Let's go ahead and calculate that. So if we go back to 1.5, and yeah, 22.5. What are we trading at right now? Let's take a look at that. Go on Weeble.
All right, so Cinemark right now is trading at 1561. So now let's take the lower end of that. Let's take a 13 PE. So let's do 1.5 times 13. That'll be 19.5. So right now I would say it's pretty cheap, but you know that's assuming that they could recover back into the glory days. So if they can do that, then yeah, I think the stock is worth around uh, twenty dollars. And let's just take a quick look at the technicals while we're on the chart here. So let's see. Looking at the one year, we are. basically slightly above the 20 day moving average. We're having a lot of trouble coming under this 50 day moving average. So um, as you can see, we had this massive gap up, but we rejected the 50 day moving average. We drew some wicks up here. Um, you know, we're drawing all sorts of wicks. So wick right here, wick right here, crazy wick, and a, a pretty crazy wick right here too. So overall, I mean, the one thing that we do need to look at is we are having lower highs. So that's never really a good sign. And, you know, right here, that was, that was pretty painful. You know, double top, fade. And, yeah, definitely it would have been a buy, 2020. You know, um, looking back, definitely would have been a buy right here. But, you know, people didn't really know how bad the situation was going to be. So I definitely, you know, if I was back here in 2020, you know, when the pandemic happened, I wouldn't have been buying this. I would have been probably too scared. If I'm being honest, Let's see if we can find any trends. Yeah, I'd say this is probably a pretty good trend to follow. We have uh, this touch point right here, this one right there, right there, right there, right there. Now, um, if we do get above this 50 day moving average, um, could possibly touch this trend again, but right now we're having trouble um, just staying in the 20 day moving average. There is a massive gap fill. I do wanna make that very clear. So this gap fill goes as low as 949 and um, Basically, the top of this fill is right around uh, $12. So this could get filled, you know, if the entire market just decides to totally slump. And, you know, Cinemark takes longer to recover, then, yeah, this could totally happen. Now, uh, let's take a look at some other things while we're on macro trends. So let's just look at, um, you know, I always like to look at revenue. So, yeah, clearly you can see that revenue drop off. Um, slowly starting to recover though, so that's a decent sign. You know, if we could continue this uptrend, that'd be great. If we're looking quarterly, um, that last quarter definitely did hurt a little bit. And um, let's see, let's look at earnings per share. As we can see, earnings per share is negative. And uh, one other thing that I really like to look at, shares outstanding. So shares outstanding, you know, this metric is increasing. So that's not really a good thing. I mean, obviously they're not gonna do any kind of buybacks when uh, they're in this type of situation. So uh, they are probably still going to do um, stock-based compensation, you know, just because uh, most companies do do that. So that is going to uh, dilute investors. And as you can see, um, earnings per share has been increasing over time. So, um, you know, on that metric, it's not really all that great. But it's not increasing at some rapid rate. So, you know, hopefully they do um, get back on track. You know, they do start uh, making positive gap earnings for share because that would be a very good look on the company. And, uh, you know, maybe we could see this uh, $20 level again. So, um... You know, I didn't go too deep into Cinemark, but I do hope that helps you out a lot. And um, hope you enjoyed this video.